Welcome to the Let's Eat Grandma the Let's Eat Career Grandma Warrior Podcast. Career Warrior Podcast. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 43rd episode of the Let's Eat Grandma Career Warrior Podcast, where our goal is not only to help you land your dream job, but to help you live your best life. This episode is a little more unique and perhaps different compared to some of the other ones. We're going to discuss entrepreneurship and specifically the idea of quitting your job to start your own business. Maybe the idea of starting your own business excites you. Maybe you're about to make that leap of faith right now. Maybe you've been in it for a while and you're not sure if you should just keep going. Well, don't do it. Just give up. It's not worth it. All right, just kidding. That's not what I'm saying. In fact, today what we're going to discuss are some of the best considerations for anyone who wants to consider this journey as their own. We're going to talk about what entrepreneurship really looks like, who it's wrong for, and if you stick around, you will hear some great stories, including highs and lows in pursuing this journey. I brought on Michael Testa, a friend of mine who is similar to me in many ways. Michael quit his high paying job to pursue his dream of starting his own business. His background previously included leading technology initiatives for various Fortune 500 companies. He now works alongside me at Capital Factory, the tech hub for entrepreneurs, where he's been putting in the hustle to launch Eat Cheap, whose plan is to become the biggest library of food and drink deals. He's also the director of ops at Flow Engine, a network strategy lead generation startup. So let's talk entrepreneurship and bring you on that journey during this conversation. And let's make your life even more fulfilling with our 43rd episode of the Career Warrior Podcast. All right, Michael, what's going on, man? Chris, it's an absolute pleasure to be here, my man. I really appreciate you having me on and love the work that you're doing right now. I just think it's so funny how we met. We were at Capital Factory. I saw you in the ping pong table, which I'm a fan of that game, and <laughs> you were crushing it. Me, I'm not the best, so we got to play some time. Yeah, yeah. Always got to get a little bit of ping pong in when you're at Capital Factory. <laughs> it helps me relieve all the stress of everything I'm working on. Yeah. So uh, loved meeting you there. Loved the idea of your podcast. And as we discussed before, uh, the opportunity to inspire and really tell a story uh, to people who are looking into entrepreneurship is what I'm very passionate about. Yeah. So I'm super happy to be on and I can't wait to get into it. I just want to say there's a misconception in the startup world that these ping pong tables are counterproductive. In my opinion, when you are working as hard as you and I, you just need that time to decompress and take a little break. It's funny. Um, I actually read, uh, and this is why I play ping pong a lot and try to take a break or go for a walk outside. Yeah. Uh, I read that if you're caught in a rut at work or you're feeling really stressed or your brain just isn't functioning that well, the best thing to actually do is do something you love and enjoy for 15 minutes sure. and it actually helps you be more productive for the rest of your day. So I always have to have my ping pong time in. <laughs> Plus, I feel like I'm pretty good at it. So yeah. I love to beat some people uh, and uh, be the be the house champion here. Well, let's, let's get together some time. <laughs> it's been too long. Yeah. Uh, I just want to hear a little bit about a little bit about your story. So touch upon your journey to entrepreneurship. How did you really arrive here? Yeah, so I think uh, I'll skip the part where I learned the value of hard work and all my sales jobs and figuring out what I wanted to be leading up to when I got into technology. True. Um, all true. So I'll start with when I was at uh, this company, Kobe Marketing. I was doing loyalty project management and I had this crazy idea. Um that I wanted to start a sports loyalty company and reward sports fans for watching games, attending games, and buying merchandise. And I came up with this crazy idea and business plan. I pitched it to my mentor, who's actually, uh, he's my business partner now, and we'll get into it. And I called it fandom loyalty. And I'm like, we'll use visual recognition technology, and people can scan their TV screens, and they'll get points for watching games. Sports fans are the most loyal fans on earth. Yeah. And everyone told me I was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, I didn't stop there. Right. So I was like, how can I actually do something? How can I start my own company? How can I do something special? So that sports loyalty idea turned into me getting with a, a fellow coworker. Uh, and I started a mobile app company building mobile apps for bars and breweries. Nice. Well, I can say I've already had one failed startup because I stopped doing that shortly thereafter. Okay. Uh, very hard. Still nice. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's good. Yeah, yeah. Very hard to pitch uh, bars and breweries to uh, want to buy an app. 
Um, but nonetheless, I thought it was a great idea and it really got, got that itch going for me to want to do something special for me to want to branch out and really just see what I can do with all my ideas, bringing them to fruition. Um, which brings us to what I'm working on today. Uh, I was with my mentor and business partner now, uh, Adrian Truscus, awesome guy. Uh, he's out in St. Pete, uh, where we started Eat Cheap. And we were sitting at this awesome place on Beach Drive, which is a really nice, bougie area. And there's this awesome half-off pasta deal, half-off bottles of wine that the server told us about. And we were like, what the heck? Like, why don't we know about this? And we got to talking, um, and we're, we're both in technology, and we were like, uh, I wish there was one single source where we can find all the best like food and drink deals and share it with all of our friends. Yeah. We stopped. We took another sip of wine. We looked at each other and we were like, we know what we need to do. And that's where Eat Cheap came about. Beautiful. Um, so that's one of the th projects I'm working on now. Isn't it great? I just cut it like how that story comes from your own personal experience and oh, just yeah. intuiting with the world saying, hey, the world probably needs this product too. Yeah. I feel that. Yeah. 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 It's absolutely great crazy, story. Crazy. And, uh, you know, we're, we're guys that just want to take action. Uh, so we definitely took action on it. And that's where all the grinding began. Uh, I remember looking back um, on our old platform that we had, just how manual all the processes were to get all the deals on the site. I was spending 14, 16 hour days after doing my day job where I was becoming increasingly unhappy. Um, I was building government payment websites after I had moved on from uh, Kobe Marketing where I got my tech uh, career started. Uh, and one day, you know, as you alluded to, you know, I had this steady nine to five high paying job. Everything was set. The 401k was going into my account. You know, I was about to have the white picket fence, two and a half kids and a dog. And I was just like, I'm unhappy. Um, I want to do something special. I love this entrepreneurial like spirit that I'm feeling like I love working after hours. I felt myself able to stay up until 1, 2 a.m. Yeah, yeah. That's where it really began uh, in Florida. Uh, I can go into how I got to Austin as well, if you'd like. Yeah, know that. And I'll, <laughs> I'll tie in my story too, how we all got here. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was in Florida and I took the leap of faith. Uh, I talked to my mentor, Adrian, um, and I mentioned, hey, I'm going to take a hiatus for a few months. Let's build this up and see if we can actually do something. I can always just go back into the workforce. Right. Right. And during that, that, that wasn't a concern for you. You felt like it, <laughs> if, if it failed, you did have this backup plan. I, I felt like, uh, you know, I'm strong enough personality wise. I had strong enough tech background and I, I value how hard I work that right. if I just got a chance to interview at another company, um, a lot of companies were hiring in Tampa and St. Pete. I can always get back into the workforce. And that's just where the confidence in myself comes into play, right? Which we can get into, uh, you know, whether entrepreneurship is for the faint of heart or not. Right. But we're like, we need to take this to the next step, right? We got 100,000 page views. We are just on Squarespace and we really wanted to build a functional platform. Uh, I was on vacation with a friend who lived in Austin. And obviously, you know, reading tech news blogs, I understand that Austin is a huge tech hub. And I, I just decided one day, I said, I'm going to move to Austin. I need to go to where I'm not the smartest person in the room. I need to go meet the smartest individuals in the world. This is where I'm meant to be. I love working, working for startups. Yeah. And I want to do something special. Yeah. So I moved. It is a side tangent almost, but is there a reason you chose Austin over like San Francisco, for instance, like what drew you to Texas? I love it here. By yeah, the way. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I started applying to jobs and I actually got a job as a go to market strategy project manager, which is like a perfect title for me. And they gave me the verbal offer. And before, you know, as soon as I got that call, called my mom and dad said, hey, move into Austin. You know, if you want to help me pack? You can. If not, this is what I'm doing. Sold all my stuff and moved down here on a whim. And that's when I came to Capital Factory. That's when in between that work where um, I kind of felt that the start date kept getting pushed back and I was like, ah, you know, I don't know. And then I started thinking about getting back into the corporate world and I met um, the CEO of the company that I'm also the director of ops for now. And it was just like how I met you. It was another coffee conversation, right? I was here at Capital Factory, which if people don't know, it's a huge startup hub, huge entrepreneurial space. And I'm a go-getter. I'm a uh, you know outgoing guy. So I just started going to all the co-working spaces to try to meet people. And I met I met this. I, not only did I meet the 
the company I'm the director of ops for now, I found the development team for our new website, eatcheap.app, um, which you'll hear me plug every now and again. We just launched. Super excited about it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and I just felt his passion. And he told me about this awesome network strategy startup idea. And after a 30 minute conversation, he's like, I want you to be a client success consultant. Like you have really strong verbal and written communication skills. You're good at operations. Within a few weeks, I accepted a full-time job at the Capital Factory with him being the director of operations while simultaneously working on this eat cheap passion of mine with my mentor. And I haven't looked back since. Yeah. Uh, and it's been so fulfilling. And I know we talked about it and you have a similar journey with how you moved down here. So we really kind of, um, you know, are on the same page with that. Yeah, it's you already covered some really amazing things here, which we'll delve further into them, like the leap of faith. Like, when do you make that uh, make that happen? You know, my story a little bit. It's it's I, I had this uh, really cool life going on where I was like this restaurant manager. I got to spend like a summer up in the Hamptons, like living this VIP lifestyle. Well, it was really tough. It was actually a lot of hard work, but I, it looked like I had that VIP thing going on. Um, the pay was great, you know, is great for someone just out of college. And, but I just realized after some time doing it, like this isn't where my, my gifts were. This isn't what my creative energy is meant to do. Not, you know, bussing tables, not, you know, making the best margarita. I love making margaritas. It's fun for yeah. me. But, you know, for me, I felt my creativity was best spent on something else. My moment where I decided to quit my job and pursue this full time was um, I would take these long drives from New York City to the Hamptons just in the car. The beach would be on my right hand side and I would just drive. And um, I just spent a lot of time thinking of like where my time was best spent. And I thought just one question, I think, triggered the entire me leaving like if I could spend the 60 hours that I'm spending in the restaurant, but apply that to my own business, like what would be possible? So I kept thinking about the question over and over again. And then I thought, Hey, maybe I can do something really cool with this. And so eventually I decided to, to leave and move back down here to Texas. Cause that's where I'm originally from. It was one of the best decisions I made personally, not saying it's right for everyone. And we'll cover that in a little bit, but probably one of the toughest and best decisions I've ever made. Yeah, so. it, it's definitely really tough. And um, like I said, it's not for the faint of heart. But to your point, like I was stuck in the same old routine. Like I absolutely Me loved, too. Me I too. loved where I was in Florida and St. Yeah. Pete, but I was getting too comfortable. Right. Yeah. And I and I know myself and I know that I felt myself getting too comfortable. Yeah. And I said, I need a new challenge and I need to be I'm a happy guy overall. And I was happy with my life. I did fun things on weekends, but I didn't feel fulfilled in my work. And I think this is maybe going to get into the question of why. Why did we do this? Why did we become entrepreneurs? Yeah. And for me, it's that quest not to be ordinary, to do something different, to do something special, to be your own boss. It was, hey, I, I feel like I have all these thoughts and ideas and I have yeah. a higher purpose than building government yeah. websites. Nothing against my old company. Like, yeah. I absolutely love them. But I just felt sitting there like this is not... Like I felt it in my bones. This is not for me. I have a higher purpose. I need to be my own boss and I need to go try to do something really, really special. And that's what got me here. And Eat Cheap feels so special to me. And same with Flow Engine because it's just two things where you're literally leading the charge, right? My title is Tech Ops Lead, but I can be doing sales. I can be on calls with clients. I can be training. Doing a podcast. Yeah, yeah. I, could be, I could be building, you know, brand marketing by podcasting. Like, yeah. it's just so many different things and you really, really hone a lot of skills and you learn a lot about yourself. Yeah, so true. Like, 100%. Yeah. Um, I want to move on to the question. I think a lot of people may not be even be asking this, but everyone needs to be asking this. But who who is entrepreneurship right for and who is it wrong for? Like, what do you think? I'll chime in too. Yeah, yeah. Um. I don't want to overuse the statement. I've been known to, uh, sometimes I'll take a statement. I'll just beat it till it's dead. <laughs> so I'll say not for the faint of heart, just one last time. I'll say at the end of the day, cause that's mine <laughs> okay. at the end of the day. Um, but entrepreneurship is for someone who's just like, extremely strong willed and okay and yeah. willing to make sacrifices. When we first met, we talked a lot about making sacrifices and that's just with your, even with your personal relationships with, you know, how much fun you're having going out. And we'll talk about that work-life balance, hopefully. Definitely. Um, 
but you have to sacrifice a lot, right? I, I not only did I sacrifice really good pay to take, like I wasn't getting paid for a while, right? I've been so fortunate with uh, Flow Engine that we've been very profitable. We've grown 300% since I've come on board and things are going well. Yeah. So it's gotten me back to that point of stability uh, and then some. But before that, those few months, like you're grinding, right? Like you're wondering, you know, how am I going to pay the bills this month? Or, you know, in our case, how are we going to save money, right? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. No, for me, that was the biggest concern yeah. for like the first two years. Like, because if your sales drop, like what the heck are you going to do if, if you don't have this um, investment of millions of dollars from some investor right. somewhere? But it's it's a major stressor. And finding investment is not easy to come by like everyone thinks, by the way. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're going to work on a second round here soon for Eat Cheap, which we're really yeah. excited about. But yeah. Yeah, it, like exactly. Um, again, Flow Engine has been so fortunate to be doing so well, and I, I love that daily grind. But when it was building up, and I was just getting a consulting fee before, you know, uh, I worked my butt off to get hired on full time. It was very, I couldn't go out with friends because not only right. was I trying to save, but also I had four hours of work to do at night. Right. So right. you have to be willing to make sacrifices and see that, like light at the end of the tunnel, I think is a big thing. And then the second thing is self-belief. You have to believe in yourself to go into entrepreneurship. You have to understand that what you're doing is going to be successful. Yeah. You have to just keep telling and telling and telling yourself that. And it's not about cockiness. It's about confidence in yourself. Yes. Because I've already had, um, again, been really lucky that people are loving eatcheap.app. But for every 10 people who love it, there's five people who are whispering in my ear, what are you doing? You can do this better. This isn't going anywhere. How are you going to monetize? Yeah. Like I've had multiple friends and family members who kind of came in, helped me out a little bit. And then were just like, where is this going? Didn't really have that self-belief that I continue and strive to have every day. And it's just... It, it gets tough some days, right? You know, you're having a down day, a client, you mess up something for a client with Flow Engine, or there's an error in the site, or you have a wrong deal on each cheap, yeah. and you're just like, damn. <laughs> but you're like, uh, what am I doing? Uh, but at the end of the day, you got to look in the mirror and you got to say, I'm doing this for a reason. I'm going to be successful. And it's really up to you. It's just how hard you want to work, right? Yeah. If we just keep working, there's no reason it can't be successful. I like to say it's not a matter of if, but when. The, my favorite thing you said was the fact that you got to look at the light at the end of the tunnel. Like the most cliche statement ever, but it, it, it absolutely it applies to entrepreneurship, like 100%. Because you're going to see darkness. Like you're going to be surrounded by darkness sometimes. And I'm going to say in like most cases, it's very tough, like incredibly challenging. So there, there were times in my career when I didn't know, um, as an entrepreneur, when I didn't know if I was going to get paid that week, you know, there were many weeks actually like that. Um, there were some really tough situations where I didn't know how I was going to make ends meet in the very beginning because you got to, it's all falls on you. You're not going to get a paycheck. That paycheck's completely up to you to put in your own pocket at the end of the week. So, so for me, that was one of the toughest things. And if you're not able to stomach that, if you can't give up this cushy lifestyle that you need from that awesome paycheck you had before, it's going to be a really tough journey for yeah. you. Like really tough. Again, to reiterate, not to be repetitive, but I got so lucky and so fortunate to get into this startup that the growth trajectory is just absolutely huge. And the payment that that is good and getting back to where I, where I want to be one day is starting to grow and get there. And I still see dark days all the time. So like, you're yeah. absolutely right. There is like n absolutely no perfect scenario on entrepreneurship. And guess what? I absolutely love that because that's what you learn about yourself. Yeah. I, I God bless her heart. I love my mom. She's, and we'll get into how you need a great support system. She's, been, she's been so supportive. Good. But yeah. something she told me, you learn the most about yourself and grow the most as a person when your back is against the wall. And every time my back's been against the wall is when I've had the biggest breakthroughs, not only personally, but professionally. And that always sticks with me. And if there's one thing anyone takes away from our discussion today, I hope yeah. that it's something like that. Yeah. 
dude <laughs> chills chills yeah and what you said something res if i can share a story here yeah. uh this was at one point in our history where we had a lot of expenses at the moment um and um our revenues were okay at the time but those expenses all came together and hit to our cash flow was like immediately down um and we I looked at my brother and I was like, oh, shoot, man, like, what are we going to do for next month? Like, this is going to be really tough. I don't know how we're going to pay ourselves um, in that like that moment you're talking about where it's like that was a really tough moment for me. And most people would look at that moment and say, this is not good. This is completely negative. But what we were able to do is look at the way we dealt our finances, look at our organizational structure and improve it. And those changes we made back when it was really bad those changes still affect us today in a very positive way. And so now it's like the complete opposite situa situation. We have money in the bank. It's not this situation where we're grabbing for every dollar because of that, um, because of the fact that we were able to bounce back from that, like so strong. So um, anyone who doesn't think that negative experiences can't be incredibly impactful in some of the best moments in your startup's history is completely wrong. So that's, that's an absolutely perfect yeah. and awesome story, my man. Uh, and it's so true. And to, to add to that, um, it's all about how you how you take it. Right. Yeah. You need to you need to have a positive attitude about the negative experience. And, uh, you know, just knowing you the short time I have, I can tell you're a positive guy. I think you can tell the same about me. Yeah. Um, and it, it wasn't always that way. And it's not always that way. But like, I promise you, if you can just take those moments and turn them into teaching moments. Uh, another great quote from uh, a good friend of mine. I never lose. I just learn. Right. No, no, no mistakes in yeah. life, just lessons learned. Yeah. So you learn the lesson, I you like jump that. back on the saddle and uh, you, you keep moving yeah. and you keep moving because of that self-belief, Yeah. which is why we got into this journey. Right. It, so it makes you rethink the way you look at failure, exactly. which is another big part of it. Exactly. So, yeah. Failure is not a term in an, on, in a, in a, in a real entrepreneur's uh, dictionary. Right. It's just lessons learned. Lessons learned. So. Love it, man. Love it. What do you feel like you gave up when you decided to start your own business? Yeah. And, and we talked about this in detail when I first met you for Cold Brew. Uh, a lot of social life, right? Um, there are times when... when 100% I, social life. Because yeah, it has to come out of somewhere. Yeah. When I moved here, I, again, outgoing guy. I met a ton of friends. I, I knew some people here. And... Austin is a, such a vibrant city. There's literally something going on every night. I can have FOMO every single night. It'll be Monday at like 11 and it's like, oh, yeah. there's this concert and there's this event. And our, I'm just like, <laughs> our building is right next to 6th Street, like a block yeah, away yeah. from the famous 6th yeah. Street in Austin. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. And anyone not from Austin, uh, come visit and go on Dirty Six. And yeah. uh, Chris and I will show you a pretty, pretty good time. Yeah. We'll hit all the bars. Uh, every single one of them. Yeah. All 300. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But, you know, it's it's making those sacrifices and, and making those decisions to say, hey, no, man, I, I can't meet you out. Right. I got I got to get up in the morning. I, I got a bunch I gotta of work get up to in get the morning. Done. That's a big one. Um, yeah, there really are no days. I can't remember the last time I took a day off um, and we'll get into work life balance because I still try to at least do something uh, once a week, every weekend. But I'm still working that morning or that night. Um, it's just. It's a lot of time, right? Because as a startup, you're fighting the clock. You need to grow as fast as you can, right? For finances, for to get your name out there, if you want VC funding. And it almost becomes an addiction, at least for me, where anytime I'm not working, I'm like mad because I just want to be, I, yeah. I, I just want to be working, yeah. right? I just want to make sure I'm grinding because I'm like, oh, I can get this done this yeah. much faster. I have this problem where I can't turn off my brain after I go home. I just, my, the wheels yes, are spinning on yes. what I can do tomorrow. Exactly. Um, but that's just me. Like that's, I can't turn off sometimes. So, so. it's definitely social life and a, a big thing I really want to touch on. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to have like the best support system, but personal relationships can take can take a big hit, right? Um, I've had I have a lot of friends that I, I I try to keep in touch with, and I'm just like, it's hard for me to get out of that groove and take the time to maybe give my best friend a call from back home who's getting married. Who thank thank God I just connected with him last night. Um, absolutely love the kid. Uh, you know my friends from back home, my parents, right? 
like I, I remember times where my mom would call and she's she's a saint or my dad would call and I would be like ornery with them, right? Like like almost frustrated because like I was super busy and I was kind of like taking it out on them. Yeah. Um thank God I'm like smart enough to under to realize they're like the best, absolute best parents ever and they support me. So I'd call sure. them, I'd call them right back and be like, Hey, I didn't sorry, I'm super busy. Like I love you so much. Like let let's chat. But you know, personal relationships take a toll. Like, uh, my girlfriend who's been super supportive, she's actually been even helping out on eat cheap with the social and she like supports my dreams and she absolutely loves the whole entrepreneurial uh, journey. Uh, even sometimes she's like, Mike, like, you know, I'm here. You gotta, you gotta, you know, take a break from work. It's healthy for you. So she, she tries to keep me level, which I really like. Um, my parents, my mom always says, Hey, make sure you're getting a good meal. My dad says, Hey, make sure you're having a glass of wine every now and again. So, um, one thing I want to tell people is don't get caught up in, in, in so much work to where you, you maybe ruin some personal relationships because the people who are talking to you most uh, and, and and are reaching out are the ones who support you the most. That's a good point. Uh, it's the ones that go deaf on you where you're like, okay, maybe I know who my true friends are. But if you have, um, I'll tell you from experience, if you have a supportive a uh, woman in your life if you have supportive parents and if you have supportive friends it makes it so much easier like i'm working with um i, I he's a he's a little behind the scenes guy but the ceo of flow engine he's like he's already sold some startups and he's very successful and he's like a mentor to me and he's super supportive with the grind and he understands it and he's helped me move into my new place which is super nice and i i'm so appreciative for him and then there's, you know, my mentor, Adrian, who I've mentioned that I work with, and he's extremely supportive and he understands the grind. Um, my girlfriend, Angela, understands the grind. And then I have all these friends who call me like, oh, I love what you're doing. Keep your head up. He asked me to shout him out. Jordan Heron. I'll give him a shout out. He's always so supportive. He he builds me up when I'm having those low days. Right. And you just need that. Like you need that. And I, I hope, you know, and I'm confident you get it. Hopefully I build you up when you're having tough days. Oh, for sure, man. <laughs> um, we get to get a game in. That's, yeah. yeah. That's what <laughs> well, I'll let you win uh, every now and again oh, yeah. ping pong to build you up. But <laughs> you haven't played me. You don't know my skills. Um, low. I, uh, I think you're better than me, though, from what I've heard, though. But. Uh, a long winded way to say you sacrifice a lot of social life and you sacrifice a lot of personal relationships. And you just got to make sure that, you know, you're staying sane, you know, good. get a good meal every now and again. Yeah. Take a little break. Uh I know this is a long-winded answer, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention meditation. It's been absolutely huge in my life. What's your meditation routine look like? Uh, so I'm very, you know, I know everyone's, it's the new thing to say everyone has ADD, but I truly think I have it. Um, so it's hard for me to, to get that concentration. And like you said, my mind's always going. So I'll try to go like four times a week, five to 10 minutes, right? Nothing crazy. But if you can get even three to five minutes a day to where you just try your hardest not to think about anything close your eyes focus on your breathing yeah there's some sort of just awesome feeling of relief when you open your eyes and you just feel so much better yeah 100 percent. i have a meditation routine actually myself nice and uh i will tell you this all goes back to our our 17th episode we talked about this concept of morning routines and calming yourself things like that so i recommend anyone who wants to get into that go back to that episode uh, but for me, I'll notice that the days where I don't meditate, the days when I just wake up out of bed and just rush to get here to Capital Factory, those are the days where I feel more stressed. Definitely. And I was telling you before we hopped on, I wasn't able to get my five to 10 minutes of stretching this morning because uh, I woke up late, <laughs> which is part of my routine. So if I'm a little stressed on this podcast, that's why. No, nah, man, it's, you've, been, you've been doing great. And um, I... I just think it's so important and eating too. Like I, yes. we got to do a separate episode on this, but like I'll hop back on, on uh, eating up nutrition. Oh yeah. my gosh, man. Like for sure. And yeah. sleep. I mean, that's goes back to the work life balance. We'll circle back there. Uh, but I want to make sure we have enough time for this question, which is let's talk about what people will think about you when you choose this path. Maybe it's a little bit less of a problem in 2019 because people think entrepreneurship sexier. They think, you know, as compared to like, I don't know, the eighties, but um, did you ever feel like people were like judging you? Yeah, I think uh, even even in today's day and age, you know, entrepreneurship, while a little sexier, if you're if you you know you're out there and you're profitable, and hey, this person got yeah. investment, 
um, it, there's still a lot of questions with it. And a story that comes to mind um, is when, in terms of like people judging you and just not not totally understanding, right? Uh, which is why I was so happy to get on this podcast that we can go into what this journey is like and what what a day looks like. Because no one true like unless you're in it, unless you're here at Capital Factory, coming working twelve hour days, uh, you know, meeting with different startup people, learning about their journey. How are you getting funding? How are you marketing? How are you selling? It's hard to understand, and I don't, I don't, it is. I don't judge anyone for that. So it is. To the story, my mom called me when I was here, and she was like, "Hey, like your aunts and uncles called me, and and they asked me what you do. <laughs> <laughs> they they, they want to know what you do. Uh, yeah. What should I tell them?" <laughs> yeah, and That's I was funny. like, and I laughed because I get it, right? And I'm like, I'm like, honestly, mom, like it's super hard to describe and explain. Like I'm a tech ops lead, and then I just said this. I said, "Tell them I'm building dreams." And she went and she, she went and she told him because she's awesome and she's a cool lady like that. She was like, yeah, I just told him you're in Austin building dreams because at its core, that is what we're doing, right? Whether it's That's a dream. That's literally true. It starts with a dream. Whether it's a dream of becoming rich or doing something cool or doing something special, it's still our dream, right? Um, and it's up to people's interpretation what they consider a dream as well. Uh, and then so like family members question like what does he actually do does he even do anything right am i just partying in austin no i'm i'm working i i i wanted to it's make, the opposite by the way <laughs> I, I wanted to make sure i mentioned this uh for yeah. all my friends back home to hear gave up the alcohol switched it for cold brew oh my god <laughs> i'm a big cold brew guy now you drink any alcohol whatsoever uh i i i dabble every now and again because like i said yeah. we need to we need to get a night out every uh here and there let yeah. loose but yeah it's a lot more cold brew now. I'll say yeah. that than than my yeah. college days or even yeah. shortly thereafter. Um, and then, so like it's family members kind of questioning, thinking like, what is he actually doing? Like he doesn't have a steady job. Like, uh, you know, how's he living? Where is he living? And then, you know, professional colleagues questioning like, you're really gonna like move? You're really gonna leave? Like, why? Like, what are you gonna do for money? Uh, and I always get the question, how are you going to monetize? How are you going to monetize? That's the big question. Right. Um, they wanted their money is the big, where the big right. concern is. And again, yeah. Flow engine growing. We have huge sales each month. We're growing. That's great. But a lot of people question with each cheap. And I'm like, it's not important right now. Right. We want to build the most badass website, the biggest library of food and drink deals there is. And we're just working on making it perfect. Yeah. We're working on. I can guarantee you if we're getting 100,000 people a month because we have an awesome website, we're not going to worry about yeah. where the where, where the income is going to come from because someone yeah. will come to us. So it's hard for people to wrap their head around that. Yeah. Um, and it's hard to explain to you without getting frustrated or thinking people don't understand, which I'm trying to get better at. You know, unless unless you're in the daily, it's, it's hard to understand because yeah. it's a lot different. Well, I want to ask something. What's because you kind of tying back to something you said at the beginning, which was like having that inner confidence, having that, that certainty that you're on the right track, that you're, you're doing the right thing. Like that, I feel like is something that's so important when you're facing all these people that are doubting you, that aren't supporting you necessarily. How do you think you've been able to overcome that judgment and those, those negative voices, even if they're in your head? That's, that's a great question. And, uh, I have an answer that, that I probably should have said, when who is entrepreneurship for? Yeah, let's get some test of confidence in yeah, here, man. Yeah, yeah. Let's but see. as my as my journey progressed and I got more mature and more confident, it, I'm just going to put it plain and simple. I just stopped caring what people thought about me, uh, and I got to tell you, it's the biggest weight off my back. It's so relieving. Uh, in my younger days, all I cared about is that next promotion, uh, what people thought I was doing or knew that I was being successful, and now it's just like. If I can look in the mirror at the end of the day and know I'm doing something special, and at least my parents know I'm doing something special, caring what anybody else thinks doesn't matter, and it's the best feeling. Yeah. I stopped. I do not. I truly do not care what anybody thinks of me anymore, and I got to tell you, it's so refreshing. It's the best. That's awesome. um, it's helped me with my personal relationships. It's helped me, you know, in a lot of different ways. And if my 
former colleague or a buddy that I used to be buddies with two years ago is like, oh, like, forget him. What's he doing? It doesn't matter to me because at the end of the day, cool. if I look in the mirror and I'm happy with who I am and I'm like, wow, Mike, you're doing something really cool. Like, keep working at it. That's what makes me happy. So it, it was just so refreshing and such a monkey off my back when I was able to grow enough to realize you don't have to care what people think. Because guess what? Even if I was the most successful, awesome, coolest, badass guy in the world, there would still be doubters and there would still be haters and you just can't worry about it. Um, yeah. And that and that's it. And that's a huge thing about getting into entrepreneurship too. Man, talk, talk about this concept of personally growing yeah, like yeah. with it it's there's no doubt in my mind that this is going to make me a better person it's going to make me a better uh, and i think that thought came when my back was against the wall too yeah so yeah. that's how you tie something all together exactly <laughs> sweet man uh well if you feel comfortable sharing and i'll do the same what has been your highest high and what has been your lowest low in your entire entrepreneurship journey it doesn't, doesn't have to be cheap anything i think in terms of highest high, for me, it's it's some of these conversations that I have uh, where I just feel like, oh, my God, we're on the cusp of something amazing. So to give an example of Eat Cheap, uh, my mentor, Adrian, had brought me to Dominican Republic to you know basically say thank you for all the work you've done. And then ABC Action News featured us, and we got like 5,000 people to the site that day. Yeah. And we were freaking out, and we looked at each other, and we had like a 30-minute conversation about how we're going to take over Yelp and how we're going to uh, onboard 20 more cities and sell for $20 million. And it's so special because we actually looked at each other in the eyes, and we believe in these conversations. Yeah. So having conversations, like there's nothing in this ties back to the beginning of what what I'm in it for. This is the true answer of what I'm in it for. And it's to have those conversations to be like, what if? What if we grew and Yelp heard about us and we sold for $20 million? Yeah. And we're crazy enough to believe it. That's the best part. Yeah. Just yesterday, my CEO at Flow Engine came in and he's like, this partner may want to do X, Y, and Z with us. And if, and if we can do this, we'll, we'll get this amount of dollars and wow, we can like really grow. And it was again, this conversation where it's like, can we turn this into a hundred million dollar company? I don't know, but guess what? I believe that we can. And like having that conversation, like the tingles it gives me and the butterflies it gives me, I, I really cannot compare it to anything else. Amazing. And for you, yeah. I bet you it's like, because, by the way, Let's Eat Grandma, Career Warrior Podcast, I listened to a bunch leading up to this. Great voice for radio, my friend. <laughs> and I bet your thing is like when you're sitting there with your brother, what if we get one million subscribers? Like, yeah, yeah. It's that yeah. same feeling. It's just so riveting to think yeah. about the possibilities. Yeah. That's why you're always like checking analytics to see like, exactly. what is it today? What is it tomorrow? You know, that's so funny. Pumped. We got like uh, yeah. 600 page views yesterday or something on Eat Cheap. And Love uh, Adrian called me and we were like geeking out. We, yeah. we made like, uh, some money in Google ads and we're like, we're going to, we're taking this to the moon. Yeah, it was awesome. Just, oh my gosh. Those <laughs> metrics when you figure them out are just uh, so exciting. They're so yeah, exciting. Huge dude. analytics guy. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. So uh, my highest high I'll explain here before we move on to the lows. I would say it's when my, when my brother joined and it wasn't just me anymore. And that still is like a high I'm continuing to ride on because yeah. they're, it's just having him in that office Man, he's probably listening to this podcast. He doesn't even know this is coming right now. But it's like, it's like um, shout out. But it made such it made such a big difference to know that I have somebody who has that same mission as me, who's able to help. And so I felt like as soon as he joined, like the the sky's the limit. Like we could, I could focus on one thing, he could focus on another thing, and we could just compound and our growth. So it was just exponential. Um, so was, when he joined on board, he made that same leap of faith to be that full-time entrepreneur. I and, would say. and it feels so good to inspire someone to do that, right? I did. I straight up inspired him. I was like, man, this is that's what awesome. can happen for you because it happened for and me. And that's what we're trying yeah. to do here on this pod. Um, yeah. Side note, one of the best mustaches, your brother. He does. It looks, <laughs> it's, it's got a handlebar and it's, it's just really thick. It's, yeah, it's yeah, weird. It's a, it's a good stash. Yeah. It's a good stash. It is good. Um, that's, that's so cool you say that because that's actually pretty similar for me i should have mentioned but like i've had some friends who are like getting in and want to help onboard cities with each cheap like i mentioned my girlfriend is super geeked about like putting content out for the social media and i can like 
literally see the happiness in them when they're doing it. And yeah. I'm just like, that feels so good. That like that for me is a small part of the dream, right? Obviously we all want to get rich, but like to your point of someone coming on board, like I've had friends who got really hype about eat cheap now and have come on board to help. And it's so fulfilling to me. And even I mentioned earlier, my girlfriend helping with the content and I can just see like how excited she gets about it. And my buddy Jordan's getting about like helping out in these conversations. And it's like, this is a small part of the dream, right? Getting people in on like having fun and doing something cool and being a part of something special. So, um, you know, that's definitely part of the highs, uh, the, those awesome conversations and also inspiring others, which hopefully we're doing on this pod. For sure. Uh, but I know you want to talk about Lowe's. Let's do it. People got to hear it. <laughs> yeah. They got to know um, what's up. And I thought, I thought maybe, about- maybe this will encourage people to say like, hey, they've been through these situations mm-hmm. and I, I can certainly go through it because it's not all roses and people look at Steve Jobs and they see nothing but success, but they don't know the crap he went through. You know, yeah, and same, and it's it's even in today's age with the social media, right? Like we we and even at Eat Cheap, uh, you know, we post successes and we you know personal personal successes, but people don't see you know working twelve hour days where nothing's coming. You're and to get into my low point again, it's not just one particular moment, right? Because as a tech ops guy and a lead, you deal with conflict resolution all the time. You, know, you deal with Uh, things going awry and then you having to fix them. It's not that it's when you're in this lull, right? When you're like your friend just posted on this vacation because he could take the time off and he got his quarterly bonus and you look at it and you're like sitting there on a Saturday here at Capital Factory drinking cold brew, which I love alone, (laughs) like working on, working on some stuff. If you take anything away from this podcast, cold brew, cold brew, big (laughs) big cold brew guy. But, and it's just like, questioning and i I, i'm actually to the point where i don't do this anymore but i told you about this i would be having like a terrible day with like flow and eat cheap and i would be like i gotta go revamp my resume and 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 reach out to a bunch of jobs and you're sitting there looking at your resume like what i do is so unique and special how is any nine to five job like gonna hire me what am i gonna do you start questioning yourself and then you know, I've had those, those same thoughts and then your those parents call and then you're like giving them attitude because you're, you know, having a bad day. And it's just like questioning what you're doing. It's, it's when you have those low moments when your day's not going right. And you're like, why am I putting in all this work? Why am I sacrificing personal relationships? Why did I miss this pool party? But it's just something you got to fight through. And Thank the Lord. I I feel like I'm past those um, where it's just like, okay, we we hit a blocker. Time to just grind it out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But it's just. It builds that inner toughness. Yes. That inner resilience. Yes. yes. Building that strong, those calluses, I like to say. Yeah. Building calluses, building a strong backbone. But it would be like in the beginning, like in December, January, February time, where it would be like a week at a time where I was like, what? am i doing Mm -hmm. and honestly if it wasn't for my support system there were times i really wanted to give up and i had friends family girlfriend everyone you know they support me i think they see how passionate i am when i'm at my highs and now it's 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 made me grown to where i can really really balance out the lows and fight through them because we have to fight through them yeah great great answer man Share my story here. Um, I don't know if I've ever told anyone this except for Ooh, close, first close time family hearing. and friends. I can't yeah. wait, man. Yeah, man. I'm scared. <laughs> um, but that's exactly what I, where I was in 2017, January. Um, so I decided to put on a conference in New York City. Um, it was going to be this really big conference um, where we bring in job seekers to like teach them, you know, tips and tricks, things like that. I had just dropped like six thousand dollars. And like, I mean, of my own personal money, like this wasn't even the business money um, at that point. So it was a risk. And I, at that point, was just so scared and just wanted it to go so well. I didn't have my brother, first of all. So it was just me kind of by myself. Support, until, no support system at the time. No support. He did come in later, which which I will say did help. But it was that moment when I was by myself, just spent all this money. There was extreme, extreme anxiety and uncertainty during that moment. Um, and I just remember at that point I was, I think it was like 12 o'clock. Um, I just got done, I don't know, trying to sell tickets or whatever, things like that. And I just went 
back to my bedroom and just like put my head down and just like tucked myself under the covers and just like went all the way in. It was just like, was the only comfort I can get at that moment. I was like, I was like, I don't know what I'm doing right now. This is really tough to put a kind of a positive end on that story. The conference went really well. Um, and I will say just from a standpoint, I met a career coach there who's still partnered with me today. Um, one of the best people, um, I had two of my professors from college who went in and spoke during that conference and just killed it. It's like awesome presentation. I still spent a crap ton of my own money and, you know, lost a lot of money, but it set the precedent for what we do today, which is having meetups every single month, which is a super scaled down version of that huge conference I put on. And that meetup generates, that generates revenue for us like by itself. That's awesome, man. So from one of the lowest lows and once again, to be cliche, like light at the end of the tunnel, like it did create a very positive spin on things. And I would never take that back, that experience, like that lowest low probably impacts me more than some of the highs I get. So I I appreciate you sharing that with me, man. And I, just to be totally raw, totally honest, like there are a few times I went back to this place. I, I, Thank God I moved into a a really nice uh, place where I feel very comfortable now. But when I was subleasing here, I just went back to this empty room and I'm an emotional guy. I I cried. Yeah. I I was just like, what are you doing? And then, you know, guess what I did? I went to the bathroom. I looked in the mirror and I said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You're you're doing something really special that 99% of people don't have the balls to do. Yeah. So guess what, Mike? be an alpha. That's what me and some of my friends say, be an alpha, you know, believe in yourself. And one more mom quote, besides the back against the wall, she told me the best lessons in life learned are always the most expensive. Did you not learn one of the most valuable lessons shelling out that 6k? Oh, oh for sure. Yeah. I think exactly. about where I put my money now. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Same, same. Yeah, I, I coincidentally spent about $2,500 in USA Today ad. Biggest waste wow. of money. Biggest waste. I felt like a baller. I was like, "Oh, it's USA ad. Today, baby." <laughs> yeah. um, but it generated no leads for us. Um, but that's just cuz it didn't work for us. But um, but I learned a lot from it. I'm never, you know, I'm going to spend a lot of my time on online marketing because that's where yeah. my business thrives. So. And you can say that you're in USA Today. So that's true. I, can, I have bragging rights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. Cool. I want to make sure we have enough time here to cover each cheap here. Um, so I'll ask one last question before we cover your final thoughts. Um, work life balance still relevant. How do you possibly even get any work life balance? Let's be real. And it's very, very tough. But I do remain, uh, I feel very strongly on this. It is a must. So it's all about making compromises with yourself. So my girlfriend's moving here in June and we kind of made a compromise. And also my best friend's moving here in June from college. He works at Facebook. Um, He's been helping us with Eat Cheap. Lucas Tondera, awesome guy. He's, he doesn't know this, but he's been a real mentor and kind of, he made me, you know, want to be a hard worker. And so I, I'd like to give him a shout out. I always say, no matter how hard we're grinding or what we have going on, we're at least doing one thing per weekend. So I'm a big like sports guy, outdoors guy. I like to stay fit. So yeah. I'm like every weekend, even if I'm working six, seven days, even if I have to stay up all night, please just bear with me. And one day we'll go hiking. One day we'll go to a concert. One day we'll uh, you know, go out to rainy another street. If anyone ever visits Austin, um, close by. Yeah. Uh, so I, I really, th- it, like you cannot work two, three weeks in a row and not take a break. Like in between my 14 hour days, I always make sure I work out or get outside a little bit. Um, so the balance, there's not much of it, but there has to be a little bit. You have to make compromises. Yeah. And I'll add to that. Like they're, and when those times where you are turning off, like actually turn off, like actually yeah. like I, I, I make a really important point at past nine o'clock PM. I don't whip out Facebook. I don't start scrolling. I don't Good start one. watching YouTube videos and random crap. Like I intentionally, like I will make my tea. I work out. I think working out is one of the Huge. best ways. One of Huge. the best I, ways. I, I, I yeah. preach that to everyone. You yeah. have to work out to stay mentally focused yeah. and sharp. Find your workout that you yeah. love. Like It doesn't have yeah. to be like pushing barbells. It can be no. anything. That used um, to be me. I was a big meathead and now I hate it. I love yeah. like yoga and like playing volleyball and stuff. So yeah. Yeah. Awesome. 
So I make a point to turn off because if, if you don't turn off, when you come back to work, you're not going to have that same creative energy and that same drive exactly. that's going to propel your business to million dollars a year. So. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So if you take anything besides risk taking and go for it, compromise and get a workout in every day. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. And meditate too if you can. Uh, yes. Yeah. And meditate. All right, Michael. Michael Testa, you've been great. I want to hear from you if you could give one piece of advice to every aspiring entrepreneur on what they should do to be successful, what would that be? Go for it and don't look back. Now, I say this because it's something that I've done. If you're going to go for it, you have to be all in. I'm all in. I sold all my stuff. I, took, I bought a one-way ticket down here. I didn't look back. One way ticket, right? Because for me, that nine to five life is always going to be there because what you learn from taking on the entrepreneurial journey, you can't learn anywhere else. Like, um, I feel like if I get back in the workforce, my skills, how well rounded they are. My mentor, Adrian, calls me a Swiss army knife now um, and talks about how much I've grown just because I've been working on both these startups and, I, and, I, and I'm passionate about that and I'm, and I'm learning something every single day. So if you're going to go on the entrepreneurial journey, don't half-ass it. Don't be kind of in. You have to be all in and you and you you have to not look back. And when someone tells you your idea is dumb because people are going to tell you that, if you don't think it's dumb, don't listen to them. Go all in, believe in yourself, believe in your dreams, and you'll reap the benefits. Uh, it, it'll be extremely rewarding like it is for you and I. Best advice Michael, I can't thank you enough for your answer so far and allowing me to chime in when appropriate. Uh, so tell me a bit. Tell me about Eat Cheap. I want to hear what the app yeah, does. Yeah. I'm going to use it. Yep. So. so Eat Cheap is the best food and drink deals according to locals. Uh, we aggregate all the best food and drink deals on a daily basis uh, in your city. We're actually live in 11 cities right now. So let's see if I can name them off all really quick. Obviously, yeah. Austin, Boston, Charlotte. Syracuse, Tampa, St. Petersburg, San Diego, Portland, Seattle, Denver, and Detroit. Nice. That's all by memory, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. It um, is his company, but still. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and it, it's a really great, easy-to-use platform. Yeah. Um, and what, what we've built is uh, an awesome distance feature where if you and I want to go get lunch after this, uh, we'll, we'll go on the site. It'll populate austin lunch the day and we can actually search by distance and have a link to google maps all the best deals going on right now so there's a radius like around yes. you uh how, well how? it's you know we use a google google maps api so cool. there's a distance feature based off of current location right um and we still have so so many more plans for this right we want to add so uh we have social sharing actually we want to add liking and disliking favoriting um and we're really building our ambassador program because along with the website we built an awesome admin portal. So if I gave you login credentials, uh, cause you're a local foodie expert, you can actually go on our admin portal and update a deal, upload a brand new deal in seconds. So that's where uh, we really wanna become almost like a Wikipedia food and drink deals. We just wanna become a community forum. We want all the foodies to have all the best restaurants and all the best prices so everyone can eat cheap and live rich. That sounds great. So how do I start using this app right now? Well, you go to www.eatcheap.app. We're not in the app store yet. We're just a very progressive startup. Uh, the dot app is kind of the new wave. Um, Never heard of it. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So dot app is actually a website, but yeah. uh, we built what's called the progressive web app. So actually when you go to the site, you can download the, the site to your home screen and we have a cool little icon and then it functions as an app every oh. time thereafter oh cool so that's so we really want to let it's a, people, it's a great shortcut yeah, yeah right it's a shortcut and um you know we also wanted to have that web presence too because people do, do the same thing for me my company that's good that's yeah, a really yeah, good yeah. thinking yeah, th thank you thank you i like to think i'm a thinker that's um, a good thinking and you know like i said we have a lot of plans to grow it and we're building our ambassador program so if you want to launch your city if anyone's out there listening and you know wants to be a part of adding the best food and drink deals to their city and be a part of something really special and help build that dream, feel free to reach out to me. 
Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm Michael Testa, comma, MBA on LinkedIn. And you can reach out to me personally. I have Instagram. It's uh, at MikeJT12. Or you can reach out to our Eat Cheap Instagram, which is at eatcheap.app. And we're really excited about it. We want to be in 25 cities by the end of the year. You know how passionate I am about it. Sure. You know, we only populate the best restaurants, no fast food places. Uh, so everyone truly is eating cheap and living rich. Uh, so we love that slogan. <laughs> awesome. Well, Michael Testa, thank you so much for your insights during this episode of the Career Warrior Podcast. Uh, you've been excellent. You're a great example of a career warrior. And that was the idea behind this episode is, is we want to showcase career warriors from all walks of life. We want to get those entrepreneurs in there. We want to get people who are not entrepreneurs, um, people who may be starting off in their career or already in their career. Um, so I think the essence of a career warrior is it's somebody who puts everything you know, to kind of tie back to that last piece of advice you gave. They're putting everything into it and they're growing professionally. So can't thank you enough for being on the episode. Everyone, please make sure to subscribe if you hadn't hit that subscribe button yet. And we'll check in with you next week on our next episode. Thanks, guys. Go out and be true warriors. And for more on your job search, make sure to check out letseatgrandma.com. That's where you can find our blog, where we post the podcast show notes and so many more articles that will help you in your job search. You can also check out our resume services if you are interested in getting your resume professionally reworked. And please make sure to show us some love by jumping onto iTunes and leaving us a rating. The support from my fellow warriors will show the world how great this podcast is and help other people in their job search. Pay it forward. Thanks guys for being true warriors and thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next week.